Thank you, John, and thank you all for coming out on this very nasty night. Um, that is indeed an accurate rendition of my background. Um, the moral of that particular story is I didn't come to the pro side of this debate uh, via my ideology. It's the most unnatural thing in the world from that standpoint. Um, I didn't come to that position by virtue of my uh, social background. I grew up in the wilds of suburbia, basically, where guns are scarce. Uh, they don't have guns to commit crimes. They don't have guns to defend against crimes. They don't have guns for hunting. They don't have guns. Um, <clears throat> my way into this position is basically evidence-based. I'm boringly um, scholarly. Um, I've been studying this issue for nearly 30 years. I've written three books, dozens of articles. I've published more articles on uh, the effects of defensive use of guns than, than anyone else. Um, oddly enough, you, 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 sometimes what you can learn from a debate is by listening to the silences, paying attention to what people would be expected to talk about but don't. Strictly speaking, the other side actually hasn't addressed the issue of the effectiveness of defensive gun use. Um, they've kind of danced around it, but they haven't actually addressed it head on. And in fact, the organization Paul Helmke represents, uh, the Brady Campaign, previously Handgun Control Incorporated, used to have a very prominent uh, segment of the of their uh, website devoted to the proposition that uh, no, if you try to use a gun for self-protection, you're going to get yourself killed or injured or it's going to be taken away and used against you. And they've more or less stopped talking about it. They're just silent on the issue. That's significant. The reason is the evidence is unanimous. It's, it's rare in um, criminological research for the, the, the findings to be unanimous on anything, but they're unanimous on this one. Uh, defensive gun use is effective in the sense that crime victims who use guns um, uh, during a crime are less likely to be injured or killed and less likely to lose property uh, than crime victims who adopt any other kind of strategy, including non-resistance. Um, non-resistance is not the safe, safest course of action. And this is so despite the fact that usually when people try to use guns for self-protection, they're doing it under tougher circumstances. Um, they, they do it not because they're quick on the trigger, but because they're kind of uh, facing really desperate circumstances. They're likely to be outnumbered. Um, they're likelier to be facing uh, offenders with weapons, including guns, uh, than other victims. They're more likely than other victims to have already been injured. Um, and out of desperation, with all of these handicaps against them, then they use guns in an attempt to defend themselves. And from that point on, they are not hurt. Uh, much of the research that previously claimed that um, if you tried to use a gun, you'd only get hurt, it, it had a simple error in, in the research that everybody here can understand. It was in, an error in terms of what happened first. Uh, researchers would report that there were many incidents in which people were injured and they used guns defensively. What they didn't know, and it turned out once the error was corrected in the research, those were always cases where somebody was first injured and then used the gun for self-protection. It wasn't using the gun that got them hurt. It was getting hurt that finally pushed them into using the gun. When they fixed that flaw in the research, they basically found that once people use guns for self-protection, they are, they are almost never injured after that point. Uh, there's good reason why the chief's uh, police officers carry guns. They're effective for self-protection, but it doesn't require the unique training and experience of police officers for it to be effective. It's effective basically for everybody. Um, you may not have noticed, but there's actually more consensus among the six of us uh, than, than might be evident at first. I don't think anybody really disputes the proposition that the effects of guns depends on who has them. I haven't heard anybody on the other side say that guns in the hands of, uh, of non-criminals are just as bad as guns in the hands of criminals. It makes a huge difference. Um, basically, guns in the hands of non-criminals or in the hands of victims, regardless of any prior criminal behavior, uh, reduce violence. They reduce it in the sense that once the gun is introduced by the victim, the offender stops aggressing, period. 
Furthermore, uh, defense of gun use is in extremely common. Um, contrary to Professor Donahue's claims, it's not sheer fantasy that uh, leads us to believe that there are on the order of two million defensive gun uses a year. It's simply probability sampling uh, surveys of the same sort that Gallup and Harris and every major survey organization uses. You just ask people questions. Uh, you're not going to hear about these defensive gun uses uh, from um, either your newspaper or nor are the police going to hear about them because, frankly, you'd, if you had been a crime victim who used a gun for self-protection uh, in a typical situation, you'd be insane to report it to the police. And, of course, if the police don't hear about it, neither will your local newspapers. Um, at best, maybe you'd be arrested for unlawful possession of a firearm because most of these uses occur in public places where you're not supposed to have a gun unless you have a special carry permit. At worst, what can happen is you can be arrested for the, the, the assault itself, a criminal assault. It, it may well be somewhere down the road after you've gone through a legal nightmare that you're cleared of these charges, but in the meanwhile, you can be bankrupted from the legal expenses and uh, have your reputation ruined, and nobody reads it on page 18 that, oh yeah, you know, Joe Smith was cleared of those charges. So um, you're not going to hear about it from police statistics, yet um, scientifically conducted, objectively conducted surveys have, in at least 20 consecutive surveys, found that defensive gun use is not just common, it's more common than criminal uses. Um, and so that's, that's not a fantasy, as Professor Donahue would have you believe. It's about as firmly established a fact as we have to go on in this area. Thank you very much.